Inshallah, today we want to recap lesson seven and eight. All right. Um, I think last year when we started back after Ramadan, I mentioned that you know we would want to focus more on reading, right? So, inshallah, when we cover the lessons, what we're going to do is I will read it. You know, we have been doing this, but I will continue, inshallah, um, reading the lesson at the beginning of each class, right? Now, I know many of us will be familiar with the vocabulary and so on, but I want us to pay particular attention to not only the vocabulary, but the construct of the sentences, as well as the endings. Now, I guess by now, many of you will realize that in this textbook, in this textbook, there, in this textbook, once a word is familiar, then what did what the author did or the publishers did is that they removed the vowels from that word so that we know the word, for example, nam, you will see the the vowels on that word, we know the word nam, right? Um, and so on, aina, and so on. So al mudarris, ad dars, we know the vowels for these words. So you wouldn't see the vowels on these words. However, when they do put any the vowels on these words, it's because they're trying to show something. They're trying to highlight a particular rule, a particular grammatical, you know, um, uh, uh, rule that, that would be would be covered in that particular lesson. So when we are reading through the, the passage, yes, we may know some of the words, the vocabulary, but I want us to pay attention to the, to the endings of the words, whether the, the letter, the last letter carries a factor, a kastra or dhamma, all right, whether it is singular or plural, whether the adjective matches with the noun is describing, all of these things which we would have covered before in great detail, you know, we can look out for these things. So when we're looking at the rules, we would understand it, right? So inshallah, in reading it, it's not only to look at the words, but we're looking at all these other aspects as well, which is what the exercises afterwards would be, you know, more or less covering, all right? So inshallah, today, we're going to read again. Now, this will be very familiar with you all, inshallah. So we're going to read again lesson seven, and then we're going to go through basically some of the exercises. Um, I know we would have covered this and we have taken our time covering it, but it would have been almost eight or maybe 10 weeks since we broke off for Ramadan and so on. And we're now starting back. So it's, it's a little refresher so that we can kick off and go on to the next um, chapter. All right. Nam, Adarusu Sabiru, Adarusu Sabiru, lesson seven. So we're going to go through this quickly. Please pay attention. You can follow in your books or if you want to follow on screen, right? Al Abu, Aina the Habtum Bada Darsi, Ya Abanai. Right, again, please pay attention to the word endings, all right? Aina the Habtum Bada Darsi, Ya Abunai, Ya. Abanae Al Abanau the Habna Ilal Malabi, the Habna Ilal Malabi Al Abu Akura Tal Kadami, Laimtum, Am Kura Tasalati Al Abanau Laibna Al Yoma, Laibna Al Yoma, Kura Tal Kadami. Laibna for a tassalati fill usbu il mardi fill usbu il mardi al abu a mad a habtum ilal maktabatil yoma a mad a habtum ilal maktabati al yoma a mad a habtum ilal maktabatil yoma al abanau bala the habna بلا ذهبنا الأب ماذا قرأتم هناك ماذا قرأتم هناك الأبناء قرأنا قرأنا الصحف قرأنا الصحف we read the newspapers الأب 
Sorry. Al Abu Asamiatum Al Akhbara Minal Ida Atil Yoma Asamiatum Al Al Akhbara Minal Minal Ida Atil Yoma Al Abanau Naam Samir Naha Naam Samir Naha Al Abu Min Ay Ida Atin سمعتم من أي إذاعة سمعتم الأبناء سمعنا من ثلاث إذاعات من إذاعات من إذاعة الرياض وإذاعة القاهرة وإذاعة لندن. Right. بس ولا هاي لايت وانت هي. We have two Arabic words here. In genitive form, we'll take the Kasra. So, Al-Riyad is the town, is the city in Saudi Arabia, the capital city. So, therefore, this will take the Kasra. Right? This word is in the genitive form, or um, it is maj, Majlur. Right? Also, to Al-Qahira is an Arabic word. Right? Originally, Arabic, that is. So therefore, in the genitive form, it will also take the kasra on the last letter. However, the last one, Londana, it is not a originally Arabic word, right? It's an English word which they transliterate into Arabic. Therefore, it is one of the categories of the words that will be what we call mamnu minasarf, right? Mamnu minasarf, you know, these words do not take any kasra. So even though this word is in the genitive form, it takes a fatha. Right, we would have covered that rule towards the end of book one. Right, so inshallah, if you can remember that when we recap, when we recap book one, we will do over that rule again, inshallah. Right, or if you want to, if you don't want to wait so long, you want the explanation, you could always let me know and we could cover that again, inshallah. Next line, Al Abu. Highlight this better here. Al Abu Samir Samir Anna Bilalan Maridun Samir to Anna Bilalan Maridun Wa Anna who fill Mustashfa Asahi Fun Hada Al Abanau Naam Hada Sahi Fun Shafahu Lahu Naam Hada Sahi Fun شفاه الله الأب آمين متى دخل المستشفى متى دخل المستشفى الأب الأبناء دخل قبل ثلاثة أيام دخل قبل ثلاثة أيام الأب أين ال أين الكتاب أين الكتاب ذو الغلاف الأحمر الذي كان في غرفتي أرأيتموه؟ أجانا مريدات أجان الأب أين الكتاب ذو الغلاف الأحمر الذي كان في غرفتي؟ أرأيتموه يوسف أنا أخذته البارحة وقرأت نصفه أنا أخذته البارحة وقرأت نصفه الأب وأين وأين المجلة وأين المجلة التي كانت تحت ذاك الكتاب وأين المجلة التي كانت تحت ذاك الكتاب البلال أهذه هي أهذه هي الأب لا لا المجلة ذات الغلاف الأصفر 
al-mujallatu dhatul ghilafil asfari marwan hadha indi oh sorry hiya indi marwan hiya indi akhadtuha al-yawma akhadtuha al-yawma yarinu al-jarasa fayaqumu marwanu wa yaftahu al-baba wa tadkhulu akhawatuhu wa tadkhulu akhawatuhu al-banat assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu al-jami' wa alaykum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu al-ab Aina dhahabtunna ya banati Aina dhahabtunna ya banati Al-banatu dhahabna di ziyarat al-mudirati Dhahabna di ziyarat al-mudirati Al-ab Amashaytunna am Dhahabtunna bis-sayyarati Amashaytunna Am dhahabtunna بالسيارة البنات مشينا لأن بيتها لأن بيتها قريب من مدرستنا هو بيت هو بين المسجد والمدرسة الأب أوجدت أوجدتنها في البيت أوجدتنها في البيت البنات نعم وجدناها وجدناها جلسنا عندها ثلث ساعة ثلث ساعة وخرجنا من بيتها في الساعة الخامسة في الساعة الخامسة الأم أرأيتنا المكنسة أرأيتنا المكنسة يا بنات بحثت عنها كثيرا وما وجدتها وما وجدتها سعاد أنا وضعتها تحت السلم تحت السلم هذا الصباح أنا وضعتها تحت السلم هذا الصباح مروان يا أمي أفي الثلاجة ماء بارد نعم سوري نحن عطاش نحن عطاش الأم أبشر فيها ماء بارد وعصير برتقال وعصير برتقال نعم so that is the passage there any questions about this any questions all right so let's gonna go through it quickly again so that we can understand what it is you just read for those of us who may not have covered this last time. Right? So, Adarusu Sabiru, the seventh lesson. So, there's a conversation between the father and his sons. First of all, and later on, the daughter and the mother came in the conversation. Okay? So, first of all, the father is saying, I never have to, where did you all go after lessons today? And the boy said, we went to the playground. We went to the playground. So the father asked them, did you all play football or basketball? The boy said, we played football. However, we played basketball last week. Right? And the father said, did you all not go to the library today? They said, yes, we went. And then the father asked, what did you all read there? What did you all read at the library? And the boy said, we read the newspapers. And then the father asked, 
Did you not listen to the news today? Right? So we could assume or we could guess that probably this book was written back in the day when libraries were common thing. People used to really go to the library often. And at the library, you could listen to radio, you could probably do other things that you know people could do in their houses now, right? So you ask them if they didn't listen to the news today, right? They said yes. We listen um, to it. So we listen to the news. Naam samia naha. Right, listen to it. And then he said, which stations did you listen to? Min ayi idha atin. Idha atin samiatum. Which stations or which broadcasts did you listen to? Right? They said we listened to three broadcasts from Riyadh, which is the capital of Saudi Arabia, as well as Qahira, which is Cairo, capital of Egypt, and from London, London, which is in England, of course. The father said, Samiatu Anna Bilal and Maridun. I heard that Bilal is sick, right, and is in hospital. He said, Is this correct? The, church, the boy said, Yes, this is correct, right? Shafahullah, may Allah. Cure him. Then the father asks, uh, the father says rather, I mean, may that be so. al Mustashfa, when did he enter the hospital? And the boy said, he entered before three days. Right? So in Arabic they say, Qabla Thalatha Ayamin, before three days. Right? But in English we would say, three days ago. Three days ago. All right? So then the father asked Aina, um, oh, then the father asked him about some things of his, all right? First of all, he asked about the book that has the red cover, or the red covered book, right? That was in his room. And he asked, Are I to move? Did you all see it? And Yusuf said, I took it, Al Bariha. Um, I took it. Anybody remember what that is? Yeah, yeah, Um, Assalamualaikum. I think it means last night. Right, Jazakallah. Al-Bariha, last night, right? Where did we reach again? Right. So I took it last night and I read half of it, right? I took it last night and I read half of it. Al-Ab wa aina mujallata and where is the magazine? Where is the magazine? Allati kana tahta the kitab and where is the magazine that was below that book? Where is the magazine that was below that book? Bilal, ahadihi here, is this it? Al Ab, la, that is not it. Al Mujallata, datu gilafil asfar. That the Mujalla, the magazine, it has a, a what cover? A yellow cover. Right? So Marwan says, 
Arwan says, Hiya indi akhaltuha al-yawm. It is with me, or I have it. I took it today. Right? Then in brackets, the narrator says, Yarannu al-jarasu fayakumu marwanu. So the bell rang or the bell rings and Marwan stood up and opened the door. Watadukulul Akhawatuhu and his sisters entered. Alright, so there's a little commentary here that the bell rang and Marwan got up and opened the door and then his sisters entered, right? So the Banat or the daughters, they said, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. And they all answered, Al Jamia answered, Wa alaikum wa salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Then the father asked, Aina the habtunnal, um, ya banati, where did you all go? Oh, my daughters, right? And they answered, The habna bi ziyaratil mudirati. We went to visit the principal, right? The female principal, Al Ab. Am shaytunna am dahabtunna bi sayyara. Did you all walk? Did you all walk or did you all go by car? Bi sayyarati, by car, right? Al banat, mashayna li anna baytuha qaribun. Li an baytaha qaribun. Min al madrasatina. Min madrasatina. Right? So he girl said that we walked because her house is close to the school or close to our school right it is between the masjid and the school who are by al masjidi well madrasati right al ab continues awajad to awajad to naha fil bayti did you all find her in the house or did you all find her at home? They said, Naam, wajad naha. Yes, we found her. Jalasna, we sat with her or we stayed with her. Indaha, thulothu sa'atin. For one third of an hour. One third of an hour. Right? Wa kharajna min baytiha fi sa'atil khamisati. And we left the house at five o'clock, right? The mother asks, Did you all see the broom? Ya banat, O my daughters, or O daughters. I looked for it a lot. And I did not find it, right? So Ad answers, I put it below the stairs. I put it below the stairs at sabah this morning. Right? Marwan asks, Ya Ummi, oh my mom, oh my mother, a fifth lajati ma'un baridun. Is there in the fridge cold water? Is there cold water in the fridge? Nahnu aitashun. We are thirsty. Okay? All this talk and they were, I mean, they went to the playground and play football, so they must be thirsty, right? So they said, we are thirsty. So then if mother replies, Abishir, glad tidings, or be happy, Fiha ma'un baridun. In it is cold water, wa asiru urtuqalin, and orange juice, and orange juice, all right? Good. Any questions about this passage again? Okay, so we're going to skip over the comprehension questions because we would have done that a couple of times before. All right, so we go straight to the next page. Safa Tisawa Arbaun, Safa or page 49. Rakam Thalatha. Sorry, Rakam Arba'a. So we're skipping numbers one, two, and three. All right, those are comprehension questions. We leave one of those. All right. Now we're looking at here how we changing 
pronouns, plural, plural pronouns, second person plural pronouns from masculine to feminine, all right? And this would have been done a few times in the passage, in the conversation. So we know we have two types, two general types of pronouns, two general types of pronouns, right? We have attached pronouns and detached pronouns. We would have covered this many, many months ago, probably many, few, good few years ago in the class, right? Attached pronouns and detached pronouns. So attached pronouns naturally would be attached at the end of a word, all right? So it can be at, attached at the end of a noun, a verb, or a particle. Remember, there are three types of words in Arabic, nouns, verbs, and particles. And these attached pronouns can be attached to any of these three types of words, all right? So in this case, we're looking at pronouns attached to um, a, a verb in this particular lesson, right? Pronouns attached to a verb. Now in this case, these pronouns attached to the verb, they would represent the fa'il in the sentence. Remember what a fa'il is? We said, go back to the sentence structure again. We have two types of sentences. One is a verbal sentence, one is a nominal sentence. Verbal sentence has two or three component states. It must have a verb. That is why it's called a verbal sentence, because it has starts with a verb, a fa'il. Then following the verb is a fa'il, or the doer of the verb. That is the person or the thing that is performing the particular action, all right? And then sometimes you have the object of the sentence, or the maf'ul bihi, which is the what the verb is acting upon, all right? So these are the three main components of a verbal sentence. So in these, in these sentences here, which are verbal sentences, all right? The pronouns at the end, they represent the fa'il, right? Or the doer of the particular action. So the first example we have here, asharib tum. So we have the verb shariba, right? Shariba, Sheen, Ra, and Ba, right? Shariba, this is the verb to drink, right? Now, when we have the attached pronoun Tum, the Ta and the Mim attached to it, we get Sharib Tum, all right? So this now has a sukun on it, right? Right, so sha rib tum sheen fata sha ra kasari join to the bar rib and then you have the ta dhamma tum sha rib tum and the sukuna ni mean. Right? I hope everybody follows that. So from the verb sha riba, you add the pronoun at the end tum, you get sha rib tum sha rib tum. Right? If you don't understand how that is formed, just let me know. Right, taking this off now. So 
So from the tum, it says the tum is the attached pronoun which represents you masculine plural, right? You masculine plural. So if I say Asharib tum al kahwata ya ikhwan, is we are saying did you drink coffee, oh brothers? All right. So you masculine plural, right? And then you have here, if you change it to feminine, you will say Asharib tunna al kahwata ya akhwat. Did you all drink coffee? Or sisters, right? So from tum to tunna. I hope everybody understand that. If you don't understand that, please just let me know. All right, let's look at one more example and then we go on to the next question, right? The next section. Akaratum hada hadihil mujallata ya rijalun. Yeah, Rijal. Did you read this magazine, O oh, men? Right? So if you change it, you would say, Akara Tunna Hadi Hil Mujallata. Right? Did you all read this magazine? Ya Nisa, O women. Right? So basically, changing the Tum to Tunna. Right? This Tum here. Right. We're on to the next exercise. Here is similar exercise. We just have to choose which is the appropriate word that is within the brackets to put to complete the sentence. Right. So, for example, we have the first one: "Ah, something al Qurana the al yawma ya abanai." So we know one time who is being spoken to. Abana, which is plural for for what? Bani, right? So Ab or Ibn, Ibn, right? What? Ibn, right? So it's plural for Ibn. Ibn is masculine, therefore this is masculine plural, right? So with masculine plural, we use karaktum, karaktum, right? So this sentence will be Akaraktum Al Quran al Yawma Ya Abanai. Right? Straightforward. And basically, it's just to choose the correct option to complete the sentence. Then we looked at the usage of the word Kana, right? And we said Kana is a, a verb which we put or we use on um, nominal sentences, nominal sentences, or sentences that begin with a noun, all right? And sentences that begin with a noun, the first noun is normally called the Mubtada, right? Which is the um, subject of the sentence, right? And then you have, after the Muqtada, you have the Khabar, which is, in English, we say is the predicate. All right? So when you put Kana in a sentence like that, the Muqtada now performs the function of what we call Ismu Kana, or the noun of Kana. And the Khabar is now called the Khabar of Kana. All right? Khabar of Kana. Why is that important? That is important because Kana now it affects these words coming after it in terms of the case. The, a normal nominal sentence, the Muqtada will be in the case of Rafa or nom nominative case, all right? And the Khabar will also be in the nominative case. So both Muqtada and Khabar will be nominative case. However, when Kana is put into the sentence, the Muqtada stays as nominative, but the Khabar now becomes accusative. It now becomes accusative, right? Now, what does he mean of Kana? Kana means like it was or he was, right? So look, look at this example here. 
We have al mudarrisu fil fasli. Al mudarrisu fil fasli. The teacher is in the class. Al mudarrisu fil fasli. The teacher is in the class. Kan al mudarrisu fil fasli. Qabla khamsi daqaiq. The teacher was in the class five minutes ago. Right? Remember when you use Kabbalah, it is um, Kabbalah in terms of time means ago, right? So Kabbalah Yawmin, one day ago. Kabbalah Yawmaini, two days ago. Kabbalah Usbu'in, one week ago, right? Kabbalah Khamsi Daqa'iq, five minutes ago, right? So this sentence says that the teacher was in the classroom five minutes ago, right? Let's look at another next example. At Tulabu Fil Maktabati. The students are in the library. So we add Kana Tet. We have Kana Tulabu Fil Maktabati. Kabla Nisfi Saatin. The students were in the classroom half an hour ago. Half of an hour ago. Right? So this is how Kana is used to show, you know, that something was happened in the past. Um, and you can use it in this construct here. Kana something something, Pabla something something, right? The next um next exercise or come sabah. Any questions so far? Any, is everything clear? All right, so the next exercise we looked at how we deal with the case of two sukuns coming together. Remember that? The two sukuns coming together. So when we have, in Arabic, we have a sukun on one letter, coming into contact with a sukun on the next letter, we can't read that because sukun is, the, you know, no vowels, no harakat, it's just uh, sucked and, you know, it has to join to what is before it. Right, so we treated it in a different, in a varying manner depending on what the words are and what the letters are that we deal dealing with, right? So how do you know, for example, we have the sentence, Akaraktum hadal kitab, Akaraktum hadal kitab, did you, masculine plural read this book did you read this book right so here we have the end of the word karatum right the meme at the end there ends with a or the meme rather has a sukun on it right it has a sukun but that's how the pronoun is it ends with a sukun right however if that sentence is changed we have what we have a karatum al quran now in this case, in the word Al-Qur'an, that alif at the beginning is alif or hamzat al-wasl. So the hamzat al-wasl is silent if there is something before it, which, in, which is the case here. There is a whole word before it, right? So we can't say karaktum al-Qur'an. You could only put that alif on the hamzat al-wasl. You could only put the fatah on this alif here or the hamzat al-wasl. If there's nothing before it, if there's nothing before it here, if you all can see on the screen here, if this word I highlighted here wasn't there, and all we had was Al-Quran, then we could say A, ah, the start of the word Al-Quran, right? If, however, there's something before it, as in this case, then we cannot read that Aleph at all, it becomes silent. So what are we left with? we left with the Lamb. This Lamb has a sukun on it, right? So if the Lamb has a sukun on it, and the word before it ends with a letter with sukun, then we have, in effect, 
two seconds clash in here. Two seconds clash in. All right. So what we have is aqraqtum al-Quran. So we can't put sukun and sukun, and we're not supposed to pause in the middle of the sentence to say al-Quran, like I just did, right? So what do we do? We put a, a dhamma on the mean. So in this case, we put a dhamma on the mean. Now this is done in reading only, right? You don't really write it. But when you're reading it, we say, Aqaraqtumul Qur'an. Aqaraqtumul Qur'an. Okay? So that is what happens in this case. Now, in the case of... Um, In the case, look at number four. We have Kharajat Aminatu. Kharajat Aminatu. So in this case, this sentence means Amina left. Amina left. Right? Right. Kharajat Aminatu. Amina left. Amina left. However, if we have a word that has a sukun on it, then you have the two sukuns clash. And again, for example, kharajat al bintu. Kharajat al bintu. Now we can't read the two sukuns coming there. So what do we do? In this case, you put a kastra below the ta. So we have here kharajatil bintu. Kharajatil bintu. Right? So you need to pay attention to that. Again, this is put in only in reading. Now, somebody might have a question. We know we have a verb and we can have, we can conjugate the verb and have a ta with a kashra below it. For example, if I say kharaj uh, two, you see, there is the ta with the dumb on it, means I left, right? If I say kharaj ta, you left, right? Masculine singular. If I say kharaj t means what? You feminine singular left kharaj t. All right. Follow me here, right? But in this one, we are saying kharajat. Kharajat means she to person feminine singular. Right? She left. Now, if we change kharajat. To kharaja till. How is that difference? The kharaj t. Anybody? How are we going to know the difference? The alif from the gene. Correct. So the third letter has an alif in this case, right? So kharaja t. So the original word here would have been kharajat. So here we just change the sukun to kasra. So we have kharajati, kharajatil bintu. All right? If, however, we were saying you, feminine singular, we would have a sukun on this gym here. See this gym in the middle here? We would have a sukun on it. So it wouldn't be kharajati, it would be kharajti. Kharaj with a sukun on the gym, t, kharajti. All right? Now, also we have the example of the word man. So if you say man had a al waladu, man had al waladu, all right? If you take out the hada and we have al waladu, we say man. We can't say man al waladu because you have the sukun and the noon and you also have the sukun and the lamb here, all right? So you can't say man al waladu, we will say. Manil, Manil Waladu. So in this case, you put the Kastra below the noon as well. All right? Manil Waladu. All right? Manil Ach, Manil Waladu, and so on. All right, so the rest of this exercise is some practice here. All right? Now, I just want to... Um, 
skip over. So I'll stop the exercises here. If you all have any questions, so we're stopping at exercise, um, exercise seven. Inshallah, next week we continue with exercise eight. You know, this this chapter, chapter seven, has a lot of beneficial, you know, exercises, and I, I think it's important to recap so that going forward we would have that good base to build upon, right? So we will recap from next week, inshallah, um, from lesson um, lesson seven. First, um, that is uh, number, uh, exercise number seven, eight, exercise number eight, right? So page 51, exercise seven, Darso Sabiru, Rokam Thamania, right? Safa, Wahid, Wakam soon. With a few minutes left, um, we'll go back to Safa Khamsa wa Khamsun, page 55. Adarso Thaminu, all right, the eighth lesson, the eighth lesson. And we have a beautiful table here, which we can use to reference, all right? Not only now, but later on when we are doing our exercises and so on, we can. This is a useful table. We can always refer back to in order to you know get the whole picture. You know, I always like to have a diagram and a sketch so that we can appreciate all the different aspects of what is being dealt with. All right. So in this particular page, we have a table showing the breakdown of a noun. Right, there's one noun broken down into broken down into ten ten uh, conjugations, right? Now oh, this we're not dealing with um, any dual number in here. We just dealing with singular so far and plural, right? Later on we look at the dual, All right? So singular and plural. Also we have Third person, second person, and first person. So al ibu is third person. So if you all want to just write it in there, because from now on, inshallah, as far as I can remember, once I remember to, I will use the Arabic terms, inshallah. Right? So it's try to um, remember these Arabic terms as far as possible. Right? So al mufrad, singular, al jam, plural. Al Ghaibu, third person. Al Mukhatab, second person. Al Mutakallim, Al Mutakallim, uh, first person. Right? Yeah, the person talking. Yeah. So Mutakallim literally means the person speaking, or in English you say the first person. Right? Al Mukhatab means the person who is addressed person who is addressed or the second person, the person who is spoken to. And al ghaib means the third person or literally means the absent, the person who is absent, right? Or the third person, right? Then under each heading, each category, you have al mudakkar and al muannath al mudakkar and mudakkar and muannath masculine and feminine, mudakkar muannath Right, so let's look at the verb dahaba and how this changes under each heading. All right, so we're looking at mufrad. Right, so you say hamidun dahaba, hamidun dahaba, hamid went. Then muannaf, aminatu dahabat, aminatu dahabat. And then mukhatab, muzakkar, anta dahabta. Then anti. The hapti, ana the hapti, right? So if you can say after me, hamidun the haba, amina tu the habat, anta the hapta, anti the hapti, ana the hapti, right? Al jamma. Hamidun wa Hashimun wa Aliyun Zahabu. Hamidun wa Hashimun wa Aliyun Zahabu. 
حامد و هاشم و علی و ذهب و انف آمنت و زینب و مریم و ذهب نه المخاطب أنتم ذهبتم عن مؤنث أنتن ذهبتن عن الأصلي نحن ذهبنا إن شاء الله this is as I said is an important table should try to be familiar with it Right. Um, if you all have facilities to copy out this page, you know, and stick it up in your notebooks, or stick it up by your desk, or where, as the case may be, so that is a good reference um, table. All right. Any questions? Any announcements, Imam? Before we close off. <laughs>